So, it's a fidget spinner. Not that interesting. But what about 150 fidget spinners? So I saw this video a while ago where someone had taken a bunch of fidget spinners. They put magnets at the ends of each arm and mounted them on the board and spun one. And the magnetic interactions between them was really cool. You'd have the first one spinning and then that would get passed along, but then suddenly things would reverse and it was very chaotic and just very interesting to watch. And so I wanted to play with that. And luckily I have an opportunity to make a storefront kinetic installation. I'm going into downtown Seattle coming up in about a month. So I ordered a whole bunch of fidget spinners and now I need to start figuring out how to actually do it. The first step is to figure out the magnets. I ordered a bunch of these small ones and I think they might be too small. Um, so I wanna set up a test board, set up um, maybe five fidget spinners um, fully loaded with magnets and we'll see how it goes. If those aren't enough, I have a couple of these on hand. Um, you know, they just build up over time. And so if the small ones aren't good enough, I'll switch to these. And then if that's noticeably better, then I can just order a bunch of these for the real installation. So here they are mounted, um, spinning nice and freely. Now I just uh, need to add the magnets. We'll see how that goes. So here it is with just two spinners using the small magnets. And as you can see, it's it's a bit underwhelming. I at least am underwhelmed. Um, they could get closer together, but that gap isn't huge. Given I'm going to be doing mounting these over a very large area, and I don't know how tight a tolerance is I can hold of that. So I'd rather not get them that much closer together. So I'm going to drill out another two and try the larger magnets. So, the bigger ones work a bit too well. Um, there just isn't enough, enough of a, there isn't enough of a gap now, and uh, they keep stealing the magnets from each other. So I'm going to drill another hole just slightly farther away, um, just to see if this is going to work at all. Okay, it's working a bit better now. Enough of a gap between the two that it's not cannibalizing each other. So now if I spin it, you get some of those cool effects like I was mentioning. So you can imagine if there's an array of, say, 100 to 120 of them, you get some really chaotic effects as stuff like this bounces all around. Um, some problems, though, these magnets are just too big, as you might have seen when I was drilling. Um, these are a quarter inch, and uh, that's just a bit too wide for the plastic to be able to drill into it easily. So um, I think I am going to order some new ones and find something in between the three, three millimeters of these small ones um, and the six point whatever millimeters of these larger ones. Um, I will also, oh, ah, it's still stealing some, that's funny. Um, I'm also going to have to make a jig for drilling those because that was a pain and I was just doing, well, a total of four spinners and obviously I have 100 to 150 I'll have to do eventually. So, uh, and I might, I might make an adjustable jig just so I can find like the really a really perfect spacing between the two of them. But uh, first, uh, time to order some more magnets. A new day has dawned, and it's time to get back to this. 
found this chunk of aluminum, which will do fine. So I just want an adjustable slot here. So I'll drill and tap the one hole over here as normal, but then over here I'll put a slot just spanning about an inch or so, just enough that I can fine tune the distance between them before I decide for the final one what I really want to do. And then I can swap out magnets and play with the different effects. So over to the mill. Here it is. Pretty simple to use. One gets mounted statically over here. And then one over here where it can slide back and forth. It works better if I had the washer. Okay. And they can both spin freely. So I've been playing with this for a while now and the thing that it has taught me is that these small magnets definitely aren't going to do it even with barely any gap at all between them. I don't get a huge amount of interaction. See, just a little nudge here and there. Not that, not enough. Um, it also taught me that the big magnets, which I'm not gonna swap back in, um, the big magnets that I have are just, they're too much. They don't sit, they don't seat well enough in here because they're too thick. So I am gonna have to wait for the new magnets that I ordered to arrive, which should be tomorrow. Those will be, these are three millimeters across. These new ones are four millimeters across, but these are only five millimeters long. The new ones are eight millimeters long. And I'm hoping that combination um, gives me what I need. So until then. So it's a new year and I have some new magnets to try. Um, these are four millimeters by eight millimeters. And hopefully they'll work better. I realized there's a better way to Drill the mountings for them. If I can pop out these, these end of piece, they're they're bearings, but they're terrible. But anyway, I can pop those out and then drill all the way through, so the magnet will actually be sitting flush up against this when I pop it back in. So I think that'll be a lot cleaner, particularly for the larger magnets. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, here we are with the medium-sized magnets, the 4 by 8 millimeter magnets, and uh, I think this is going to work now. I was trying to get some good coupling between the two, but not so violent that it you know, wants to pull the magnets out of each other's side, um, like I was getting with the larger quarter-inch magnets. Um, yeah, I think this is worthwhile to continue. Um, there's still some open questions. Like, should I set the polarity so that that can't happen, so that, you know, they're all positive pointing out, so that it's always a repulsive effect? Or should I have this where some are attractive and some are negative? Obviously, since there's three, I can't completely balance it, and maybe that's for the best. But I think the only way to answer that is with a larger grid. I think this is as much information as I can get out of this simple system of just two. I need to go back to this plate um, using the spacings from here now that I have a better idea and do, I don't know, six or seven in a grid, a hexagonal arrangement, um, and see how that goes. So on to that. This is them all opposed to each other. I don't know if it's positive or negative out, but they're all the same way out. And 
It seems like more interesting interactions this way. This is why I need a larger grid of them, because now, if one of them stops in this position, the other one has no chance of interacting with it. But if there were more up here, all around it, it, it would still... There'd be no way for all of them to be out of range of each other, so... We'll see how that goes. Oh, yeah, see, that's... That's some really cool chaotic behavior. That's what I want to see. wondering what this weird plate that I'm using is. Well, four, four and a half years ago, I was chosen to make the bases for the Hugo Awards, um, which if you read science fiction, you'll have heard of it. And if you haven't, then it means nothing to you and that's fine. Um, anyway, at one point, I was getting a bunch of the plates water jet cut um, during the prototyping phase, these were going to be the very base, and then uh, you can look it up online. Anyway, I, uh, that was before I learned to double and triple check that all my units were right um, when sending something out to be to be cut. So uh, this is... I forget what went wrong. Anyway, it's much larger than it should have been. Um, the, you know, the real ones were like, yay big. So, um, you know, good lesson. And I have a couple of these laying around. They make a nice scrap for something like this. Oh, oh, look at that. Yeah, once you get this grid of them, they're so much more coupled. They can't, oh, that's so great. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, that's so much better. And you, oh yeah, if you just have one slowly turning in here. This is gonna work. This is gonna work! Oh, that feels so weird when they come close to each other and you can feel it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So now imagine this, but a wall of it. Say... Well, not 150, because I... 100, 120, somewhere in that total number. A lot. Okay. The next thing is to see, does it work vertically? That's a big question mark still. But I'm pretty happy with this. So here they are vertically. I think it's going to work no problem. I was wondering if I was going to have to really fine-tune the balance on them, you know, start filing away bits of the plastic till they spun freely, but um, I don't think so. This feels really... These are these are turning really smoothly. I, I can easily imagine... I don't know. I, have, I don't know yet if it'll be the full wall off of a single input, or maybe I'll have, you know, three or four motorized ones giving the input, but... Uh, yeah. This is going to work, I think. I think it's going to work. 